Okay, what's up guys? We're back to recording Invisible Apartment. I've actually decided to just mute the music, so I'm sorry if you would prefer it on, but for me it's really loud and I don't like that. We're also... you didn't miss anything, I just pretty much clicked on the right decision. Okay, let's begin. Wait, I feel I'm being watched. Why so sudden? I do not understand these mood swings. Intuition, better than software. I have a bad feeling. Let's return later. She leaves the room and walks past a man who's about to enter the room. Then she speeds up. That man would have sent us to jail. So, you're everything but the ordinary. Is there something you don't hack? The man grabs Casey and pushes her into the apartment. God damn it, same position again. You're a hacker. Uh, hmm. She stops for a second, as if someone splashed her face with cold water. I needed to be sure. Go away. Leave me alone. Not until you tell me what you've been doing at those sleeper cells. Leave! Explosive will detonate in five, four, three. No! Don't blow my head off! Idiot. Uh oh. I'm not afraid to die. Actually, yes, I am. Don't hurt me, please. Right. Why the one cell? Leave. Let me go, you stupid idiot. I'll kick you if you keep touching me. I don't want to hurt you, okay? I'm a friend. Sure. Honey, please let me go. I'll give you a kiss afterwards. <laughs> let go. So, the sleeper cell you were at. What is your name? Alex. Alex. Let me go and then go to hell, okay? Right. You don't seem to understand. I won't let go until you tell me why you were at that one cell. Bunny starts crying. I'm a friend, okay? Ha. Huh. You're a hacker, right? H what? Uh, er. I'm a hacker, too. I'm no idiot. Bunny stops struggling. I'm not here to hurt you. I just want to talk and know what's going on. I just want to know the truth. Why are you trying to get into the Central Authority server so badly? Central Authority? No one is trying to get into their servers, even if I theoretically would. Stop. Quiet now. Even if it theoretically was my goal, how could you possibly know about it without working for them? What do you know about this place? What do you know about this apartment? You hacked it and now it's not visible in the city's database. It's like a black hole. What are you saying? You think I did this? Do not trust him. I don't. Now be quiet for a moment. I didn't do this. I couldn't have. If I knew how to do such a thing, then all my problems would have disappeared a long time ago. I have no way of trusting you. What if you're the one who set this place up, huh? Then this might be a honeypot. Did you? Uh, did that ever cross your mind? You want to get caught? I don't want to get caught. Of course I don't want to go to jail. But I also need some answers. Where are the questions? Truth's expensive. She speaks in a calm voice. I'm tracking a connection. A hacker. The trace of the connection led me to that sleeper's cell terminal. I wanted to follow the track from there. That's all I'm telling you. Give me the data you have. If it's true, I'll help you. If not, then you should stop with what you're doing. If someone is hacking sleeper cell terminals, then the people inside might be in danger. Are you making me your cheap informant? Are you playing a detective here? The sleeper cells aren't your business either. Besides, they're filled with dead people. They're not filled with dead people! Alex shouts at Bunny. I have a good feeling he has a family member in one of those cells. Good feel about it. She freezes. Do not shout at me. Me talking with you is my own decision. Let us keep that in mind. She speaks in a calm voice. Bunny looks away. 
I'll grab you again if you try to kick me or run away. Wishful thinking. What now? I may have found some data, but I don't know whom they belong to. I could perhaps make you a copy if it still exists. In the future, maybe. But I'd appreciate something in return. Maybe something you found, too. You changed your hair. Buddy inhales and holds her breath. A few seconds pass until she finishes processing that one sentence. Oh, yeah? What color were they before? Pink. My head hurts from all the arguing, but I can still think straight. How do you know? I work for the Central Authority. Bunny turns pale. You're insane. This is important to me. Give me the data which led you to the sleeper cell. Mask? Yes? What are the chances that he'll use that as evidence and we end up in jail? The odds are 27 to 1 that this is a trap. Bunny silently looks Alex in the eyes. What's your name? Bunny giggles. That's asking too much. Not part of the deal. Call me Bunny. Tomorrow. Tomorrow? Bunny takes a deep breath and runs outside while throwing a memory card at Alex. She runs out onto the street and heads towards the park. In the late evening, she sits at a bench in a public park. For hours, she looks into the distance. At night, she's still there. Hours fly by until it's morning. You know, I'm scared and excited at the same time. I noticed rapid movement of the fingers. In other words, my hands are shaking, yes. On one hand, I want to act like an action hero, but on the other, I'm scared when confronted. You promised him that you will meet him again. I haven't talked to anyone in ages. Hello? A human. I haven't talked to a human in ages. I almost forgot what a conversation means, and now someone's telling me that he's on my side? During the time I spent with you, I concluded that you fear being confronted with uncomfortable truths. You're contradicting yourself all the time, AI. Logic? Pfft. Don't make me laugh. You are far from laughing. In fact, I believe you're almost crying. I am sorry if you disagree with my analysis. On one hand, you want to be part of these people, but on the other, you fear them. I am merely reacting to your current stance. I won't run away this time. Don't worry about that. Second encounter. Please come with me now. Bunny takes the man to the rooftop. Why are you taking risks the way you do? You're still young. You could do anything you please. I haven't heard something that naive in a long time. Don't be offensive. I'm just trying to talk with you here, and you're making it hard. Okay, okay. It's not like I have any choices, you see. I want to lead a normal life, earn a decent living, be part of society, have friends again. I fear I'm slowly forgetting how that feels like. Why don't you live normally? Some of us just can't. I can't lead a normal life unless I win a war for it. Go on. I've been caught when I was still a teen for hacking. I was really good though, or so I thought. Nevertheless, I have a record. A record for hacking disqualifies you from a decent job in this society. They won't let you touch a computer. People don't trust you. Once I finish school, I realize that this city wants to dissolve me. Kill me. It doesn't want to kill you. Right. Anyway, I won't accept this. I don't accept this. This flesh wound. And I don't care about anything else than making it invisible. Let it disappear. The person who made an apartment disappear from the database of the central authority is deep enough in their infrastructure to help me out, too. I want my name to be clean again. We live only one life. Should I accept their stupid rules? You could just leave. Life doesn't exist only within the borders of this city. Should I be growing vegetables like the empty-headed fools who live in the countryside? What's the difference, then? Oh, alright. I guess we vegetable growers don't ha know how to use a toilet, do we? I came from the outside, from a small town. Sorry. In my opinion, you have an elitist point of view. 
No, see, I don't want to make millions. No, no, it's not about money. It's not about that at all. The families of old Jessica, Central Jessica, they all have only one truth. They're dogmas. So they disqualified you from a life in New Jessica. It's their loss. Heh <laughs> heh. Why are you here? Why are you in New Jessica, near the sharks? I don't care about the same things you do. I have other goals. The cell you tried to hack the other day. My mother is the sleeper. She's in the tank. You've tried to mess with the terminal, which keeps my mom alive. Knew it! Pick up the phone, because I called it. And now I'm going to drink some tea. <sighs> Shock. I just wanted to be close to her. That's why I'm here. I couldn't care less about a career, public life, or anything like that. Of course I'm trying to be helpful to society while I'm here. I seem to be an ice queen. Yep, I'm an ice queen. You must think I'm a spoiled brat. Please don't do anything stupid. Let's figure this out, okay, bunny? My name is Casey. After Alex leaves, Casey falls asleep. She has a dream. She's floating around the city, not falling, nor progressing upwards. There is an intense light everywhere. Sunbeams make her warm, and she can't remember a single problem, a single face of obligation. Here, she feels free. It seems as if no one sees her. Life on the streets below her continues. People are in a rush as always, laughing, arguing, doing everything as usual. Then she remembers. In an instant, she begins to fall and the sunbeams turn to chilling wind. She feels frightened. Right before she hits the ground, she opens her eyes. Her heart is beating fast. This is one of those dreams that you remember vividly. Why are my best dreams the ones in which I die? Maybe you wish to change. Is dreaming of death not symbolic for your desire to escape? I have nothing to escape from. Only things to escape to. I have nothing but myself. You are being pessimistic again. Let's go shopping. You mean shoplifting? However you call it. Fact is, I can't live off of air. I mean, you could try. The man asked you not to do anything stupid for now. Alex, yes. In that dream, he reminded me of myself. But then I fell. Will he destroy all my dreams? Is a reminder of reality not a good thing? You're being too philosophic. Let's go. Are you sure? Yes, let's make use of our time. I'll leave the ears part here just in case. Stay connected and record everything. I don't want anyone sneaking in while we're gone. Okay. Bunny goes to a mall to hack into the POS software to get some groceries. It's simple. She'll enter the mall, have her smart glasses do their pre-programmed thing, perform something that could be called cashless payment at the counter, and leave as fast as possible. The advancement of mobile cashless payment has created a new class of hackers who specialize in hacking payment terminals, cash desks in malls, or restaurants. You don't need to give anyone any physical paper currency. Everything is digital where there is a digital link there are hackers. Excuse me? She's still in a dreamlike state, thinking hard about the other day when she met Alex, and about the events that preceded it. I need to make sense of it all. Am I getting closer to my goal, or is it drifting further away from me? Now I realize that my original plan is getting old. Days became weeks, weeks became months, and now I'm afraid that the few years I'm doing this will slowly drive me into the corner. That could only be viewed as a failure. Am I on the right track? Even though Alex is on the opposite side of the fence, he's by far the most normal at the same time mysterious person I met in a long time. Casey doesn't notice the warning messages in her smart glasses. Men in uniforms enter the mall, and the mall's entrance closes with a beep. That's when she notices something's wrong. Her heart seemed to jump five beats, but it's too late. She looks at the security agents as they approach her. She's got a confused look on her face. Is this it? Such a ridiculous way to get caught as well. I'm better than this. I'm much better than this. I'm too sleek to get caught like this. Casey screams for the last time before the guards grab her and take her away. Meet Londo. I almost thought I lost somehow. 
I got the message that you caught another one. Is that right? Yes, sir. We got one. It's a young girl. Looks like she's been behind the recent security breaches. I see. So she's the one who getting closer and closer to our database over the last month. A single hacker. She learned a lot and avoided being caught for such a long time. We can't afford to let her out. Londo looks at Casey's medical record. He enters unknown viral disease, unclassified, high risk. This, together with other bogus information, ensures that she's officially a sleeper. Her blood sample is infected with an artificially created virus, a product of Londo, that even when studied and an analyzed by experts will keep them busy for years to come. Call Clement. Hey, how are you doing? Good, good. Things are progressing. I have another case to report. Could you give me another sleeper cell? Another high-risk one, huh? One of the smarter ones. I'll start the preparations right away. The medical info will be updated in a few hours after I receive the ID. I'm so damn unprofessional. Phone going off at a time like this? Thanks. As usual, you'll receive your money in a few weeks. Londo looks at a picture of Casey. You, of course, have a concept of sacrifice. I'm not undervaluing you. I just believe that we view sacrifices differently. If only the world could look away for a moment, all our problems could be taken care of. All of our problems could disappear. Londo is a member of one of the families of old Jessica, the inner city's upper class. He views people like Casey as parasites, those who threaten the status quo. He is in charge of the city's information security. He is the one who makes sure that no one has access to information they shouldn't have. He, like many others from old Jessica, holds high-level positions and in intuitions and in businesses. These are the arms of the octopus which holds everything in a trance. History books speak of information breaches that led to the demise of whole empires. There are conspiracy theories which attribute changes in government to activity of some lone hackers. A lone hacker operating on his own outside of any group that could be infiltrated. A highly flexible individual is the toughest enemy. Casey is one of those who didn't get caught for a long time even after performing over a hundred hacks through POS terminals, getting closer and closer to the systems of the central authority. Over time she peeled one layer after another, giving her access to more sensitive systems. Originally, the authorities thought that the security breaches of the last months are the work of a group of hackers, but when they analyzed Casey's smart glasses, they were amazed that it's all been her work. For just a few seconds there, Casey has a dream. She feels weightless, feels as if she's the only thing floating in the galaxy, as if she's no longer bound by Earth. Then she's back on Earth, it seems. She's like a ghost, flying over people's desks in a crowded office. It's busy, filled with people. She floats above their heads. All of a sudden, the office is empty and there is a flash of light coming from outside of the windows. In front of the window, there is just one figure looking at her, looking at her, although she's a ghost in this dream. After that, she's in space again, orbiting Earth, feeling the emptiness, but something drafts her back to the surface, drags. Now she realizes that Earth has changed. There is only an abyss. Inside of it, there are monsters, crawling, turning, opening their mouths. They look like giant caterpillars. Do you want the future to look like this? Casey dream. Casey's dream ends and something even stranger replaces it. This isn't real. I remember a few dreams where I knew I was dreaming. Why is this one so vivid? This feels like reality. Welcome to your subconscious. Well, you're... Not very attractive. I'm I'm guessing this is uh that guy's mother. What? You're not real? I think. Decide for yourself if I'm real or not. Am I just a part of you? I've been caught. Yes. I don't remember anything afterwards. Where am I in reality? If I'm in the prison then, did they drug me? Why are my dreams so vivid? You can't explain it on your own. There is a wall keeping you from accessing some of your memories. Someone's messing with my mind? How will I know what's true and what's not from now on? Don't worry, I'll help you. But aren't it you? Part of your dream? An illusion? First things first. You are in a sleeper cell. What? Why? What's happening to me? I... Nothing's wrong with me. Or is it? I could be in a sleeper cell for years. I never agreed to anything. That means that I should be in an artificial coma. 
I shouldn't be dreaming. You're welcome. Although you didn't agree to anything, fact is that you are in a sleeper cell. I heard a conspiracy theory a long time ago, but it sounded crazy and was dismissed. What was the conspiracy theory? That people... That some people are put into sleeper cells by the government. Yes, that's the crazy theory. Everyone who believes that is a nut job. There's a system in place which prevents such things. Will I be awake in a dream forever? Who are you? Wait a second. I recognize you. You're a sleeper. I visited your cell a while ago. You visited my cell because you tracked down a connection you stumbled upon on the servers of the Central Authority. You thought that my cell was used as a proxy. How do you know all of this? Come on, you're smart. No need to be shy. I do have a mad assumption now, but how is that possible? The same way that we're not in an artificial coma, but talking in a dream, honey. You are a hacker. You're the one I've encountered. But how do you do this? They've caught me and installed me as a sleeper. That's a fact. Actually, I got myself caught. Why would you... It was part of my plan, see? I had a special chip implanted which lets me stay partially awake in my cell and connect to the cell's network. You could say that I'm awake in my dreams. You are connected right to the hospital servers. And through these, I'm attempting connections to the central authority. Of course, it needs some work and some proxies. One of them you encountered. The apartment. The one that is not in any database. That's one of your proxies? Okay, so... Things are starting to get interesting. But I'm gonna end the part here. Thank you guys for watching. I'll talk to you later. Peace.